you know, writing is not going to figure itself out on its own. Like, a hundred thousand words of your thesis or eighty thousand is not going to write itself. Now think about it, like, if you've got to write eighty thousand words and you've got four years to do it, you've got to be writing twenty thousand words every single year, right? If you're struggling to finish your PhD in time, if you're worried that you might not be able to do it in the stipulated three or four years, if you're feeling overwhelmed or frustrated with your PhD journey, then in this video, I'm going to walk you through the five secrets to finishing your PhD fast that I think nobody is really talking about. Before I dive in, you might be wondering, you know, who is this guy and what are these tips based on and why should I even listen to him? So these five secrets to finishing the PhD fast are based, first of all, on my own personal experience of finishing my PhD at the University of York in teaching English in just three years while publishing three papers and also working full time as a lecturer at the university for two out of those three years. And on top of that, over the last three years through Academic English Now, uh, we've coached over 400 PhD students and researchers, helping them write excellent theses, publish research papers. So I've had the pleasure of really observing a lot of PhD students, some of whom, you know, came in to work with us feeling really frustrated, you know, already getting extensions on the PhD and feeling really overwhelmed with the whole process and being this close to quitting their PhD. And we were able to turn the situation around and help them to finish their PhD, publish papers, become researchers. So my personal experience and that experience of really coaching hundreds of PhD students have really given me an insight of what it takes to really be able to finish your PhD fast and also do a good job of it. So with that said, the first really, really crucial tip is that you've got to start early. What do I mean by that? Well, the biggest, one of the biggest mistakes that I see a lot of PhD students make is that they keep on postponing the writing. A lot of you live, I'm sorry to use the word, in this delusion, but I'm just gonna be straight here with you and tell you how things really are. But a lot of you, unfortunately, live in this delusion that you're going to have a lot of time to write your thesis and write your papers later on, right? So in the first year, you know, you're kind of thinking, oh, I still haven't figured out my research question. I've got to read more literature before I do some writing, right? And then in the second year, you're kind of thinking, well, I still kind of have to uh, figure out my methodology, design my research before I can start writing. In the third year, you're kind of thinking, well, I haven't finished my experiments yet. You know, I haven't got my results yet, so, I need to wait for that until I start writing. And then year four comes in and like you've hardly written anything, you know, you've got deadlines, you're feeling stressed and you're feeling super overwhelmed at that point. But at that point, it's really difficult to turn your situation around. I mean, if you come and, and wanna work with us, we'll still probably be able to help you, but it's gonna be pretty hard and you're gonna have to put in a lot of effort, right? So that's why it's really important to start early. Now, what I did, you know, right, even before starting my PhD, when I got accepted, that was like sort of like in April that I got the letter that I was ac accepted to start in September. Well, I spent, you know, between April and September, I spent most of that time actually exploring the literature. So when I started my PhD, I already had very clear ideas of where the research gaps were and what I potentially wanted to do, which of course I consulted with my supervisor, it changed slightly, but nevertheless, I was already, you know, five months ahead of everybody else. You know, when my colleagues were starting in September, they they almost had zero idea of what was going on in terms of the research gap, what they were going to study. I already knew that and I had read tons, right? Same with writing, you know. By the end of the first year, I had already written a draft of the literature review chapter, I had my methodology chapter drafted, and, and I wrote the, the, the proposal to get ethical approval for my study. And again, this wasn't like, you know, I have some magic powers when it comes to writing a PhD thesis. No, not at all, right? It was just that like, I started early with the writing and I was doing it every day, right? Which brings me to the second secret of finishing your PhD fast, which is writing daily. Now, again, a lot of you, I think, live in this delusion that you don't have to write daily that writing will just somehow like figure itself out, that like you've got to spend your days in the lab doing experiments, you've got to spend your days, you know, reading the literature and all that kind of stuff, which of course you have to do, but 
you know, writing is not going to figure itself out on its own. Like a hundred thousand words of your thesis or 80,000 is not going to write itself. Now think about it. Like if you've got to write 80,000 words and you've got four years to do it, you've got to be writing 20,000 words every single year, right? Um, and then if we divide it by, let's say 10 months, assuming you take some holidays and stuff like this, right? This means that you've got to be writing 2000 words a month. And you know, I bet you aren't doing that right now. So if you haven't been writing for a whole year, you're already 20,000 words behind. Now, how are you going to write those extra 20,000 words? Or how are you going to write 60,000 words in year four of your PhD? That's delusional. Right? Well, you might be able to do that if you work 24 seven, but you're gonna feel super stressed, overwhelmed, frustrated, and the quality of that writing is going to be shambles, if we're honest. So that's why it's really important to write daily on a regular basis. And I get it that like, you've got to do the experiments, go to the lab, do field work, you know, and all that kind of stuff. But really, if you wanna finish your PhD fast, do me a favor and start writing on a regular basis. That is really, really going to help you. And that's exactly what I did. When I was reading the literature at the very beginning, even before starting my PhD, I was writing, you know, whenever I read five or six papers, the next day I would write about those papers and then I would read five or six more papers the next day. And then again, I would write about them. And then slowly, you know, the literature started taking shape. And then I started structuring the, the, the literature review chapter. And before you knew it, I had the first draft of the literature review chapter. Of course, did it change throughout my PhD? Of course it did, right? But I already had a solid base to work with, right? So that in year two or year three, I was making small tweaks or small changes to it. I didn't have to write 20,000 words from scratch. And on top of that, the benefit of it as well is that you're practicing your craft. You know, don't forget that like, if writing is difficult right now and you're not writing, your writing just isn't gonna get better on its own. Like writing is gonna get better if you write on a regular basis and you get feedback on your writing. It's, it's that simple. But if you aren't writing, your writing is going to remain poor for the rest of your PhD. That's, that's just the truth. So that's why the second really important tip is to write daily. If you wanna work with me personally to help you to finish your PhD, write an excellent thesis, publish research papers in top journals, then schedule a free one-to-one -one consultation with my team. We're going to look at the biggest challenges that you have right now, the goals that you want to achieve, and then see how we can work together to help you to achieve your goals faster and with less effort. And the link to that free consultation is right below the video. Now, the third tip that I wanna share with you is that you've got to plan things, right? Usually what happens is that writing will be really far down the line of your priorities. You, you will prefer to go to the lab, you'll prefer to read the literature, you'll prefer, of course, to hang out with other PhD students and drink coffee or beers or whatever else you prefer drinking. And writing will just like be really far down the line of priorities. That's why you, it's really important you start planning. Because what I see with the PhD students that come to, to us to get our coaching and mentoring is that, for example, they spend days reading, you know, and they go down rabbit holes reading the literature, but for literally weeks or months, they aren't writing anything, you know? And that's a problem as well with planning, you know? So what you need to do really is, is you need to break down, you know, the, the PhD tasks into smaller, more achievable goals. So let's say if your overall, one of your goals is to finish the literature review chapter, um, let's say by, by August this year, well, what needs to happen for you to be able to finish this PhD chapter? Well, first of all, maybe you still need to read the literature, right? So maybe you need to read a hundred papers. Apart from that, you know, you need to write the 20,000 words, you need to structure it and so on. These are like more achievable tasks. And then you wanna put those tasks or activities on your schedule. And the worst thing that you can do is that like you spend just days reading and not writing anything. What you wanna do is for example, you know, spend two or three hours in the morning uh, reading and then two or three hours in the, in the afternoon writing, right? It's, it's really that simple. So you read and you write, you read and you write. That's exactly what I did for the first, you know, six or seven months of my PhD. I was just like sitting in my room, reading books and writing, you know? I would read, you know, five, six articles in the morning and then I would write 
my reflections, what I found about them in the afternoon. And then the next day, I just did the same, right? And it all came from, from a plan that I had, you know? And also a long-term plan. You know, if you know that you need to finish your PhD in three years, and I knew that, and I, like, I didn't have more money to pay out of my pocket to continue doing it for the fourth or fifth year, because I was, you know, I was self-sponsored. So I had to finish in three years, right? And I knew I had to do these experiments to be able to finish it. So like, there was a certain schedule of things, you know? And you need to really sit down and plan everything and put it in your schedule. Because if it's not on your schedule, if you don't put it in your Google Calendar, it's just not going to happen at all, right? So that's my tip number three. You really have to plan thoroughly. Now, tip number four that I, that I wanna give you is to stop arguing with your supervisor. So what I, what I found is that, you know, a, a lot of you, you know, which is natural, you become very attached to your writing, to your PhD project, to your research, to your research results. And when, when we get criticized, our initial reaction is defensive. How dare you criticize me? How dare you criticize my project? We, we become very defensive, right? And what I've seen a lot of PhD students do is that they keep on arguing with the supervisor about insignificant things, really. But that, that just makes your PhD journey so much longer and so much more painful. So my, my tactic throughout you know, the three years of my PhD, and mind you, like my supervisor was, was amazing. If you ever want to do a PhD and you want to have an amazing PhD supervisor, then you should definitely take mine. Like they were fantastic. But like my tactic was basically to agree with 90% of his suggestions and comments. There's always a small amount, like five to 10%, where you kind of have to put your foot down and just say like, no, this, this isn't right. This is my PhD project. I think I'm going to be doing this. But this is really the minority, maybe five, maximum 10%. 90% of the, of the things he suggested to me, I just did it. I didn't spend the next hour kind of questioning it or like thinking about counter arguments why I shouldn't do it. Because think about it. I mean, like most PhD supervisors want you to finish the PhD, right? So the advice that they're giving you is, is generally good advice, right? They're not giving you some stupid advice. And they've done a PhD before. They, they've supervised other PhD students. They've seen what works and what doesn't work. They've seen what's feasible. So probably if you think about it objectively, you know, even if you, you know, you feel angry about the comments, you feel frustrated, like really, you know, their, their feedback 90% of the time is gonna make your PhD research so much better. So like my tip number four would be just to, just to do what they tell you to do and stop arguing with them. And my tip number five is a little bit different. It, it's got more to do with, you know, how you kind of live your life and, and the lifestyle choices that, that you make. Because really, you know, if you want to be highly productive and you want to finish your, your PhD, I think it's really important that first of all, you do exercise, you sleep well, and you eat well. And you might say like, this is, this is rubbish. Like, you know, this is, this is no good advice for finishing your PhD. But really, you know, think about yourself as a, as a machine, right? As a car. If you give your car olive oil instead of gasoline, it's not gonna go very far and the engine is gonna break. That's the same with you. If you give your body really bad food and fast food all the time and, and you eat out and, and you, you, know, you don't eat your fruit and veg and stuff like this, like you know, your brain is not gonna function very well. It, it's just, you know, you can look up however many scientific papers you want. It's, it's totally proven, right? And it's, it's very simple, but if you do it, like it's completely going to, to change your productivity. And also doing exercise. Like I found, you know, that whenever I felt overwhelmed, stressed, like there was too much stuff going on in my mind, I had spent the whole day in my room on my own, reading, writing, you know, if I went to do some exercise, like my mood improved so much, it's not even funny. Like doing exercise is really fundamental. Like whatever exercise you prefer, go for a walk, you know, go on a bike, go to the gym, lift some weights, do yoga, whatever it is that, you know, that you enjoy, but do it. Like I promise you that it's going to increase your productivity so much that it's not even funny. You will never regret doing exercise. And of course, on top of that, like, you know, it makes you more healthy, you will live longer. Yeah, you'll be just healthier overall. There are only benefits to doing that, right? So definitely do like half an hour of exercise every day. And then also sleep is also part of that, you know? So like, if you wanna be 
really productive, like you've got to sleep eight hours, right? Don't, don't live under this delusion that you can just like not sleep and just live on coffee and energy drinks or perhaps some illegal substances. Like you, you can't, like the difference in productivity, if you sleep every day for at least eight hours, is tremendous like like the amount of quality work that you will be able to do in a much shorter amount of time is is so big that you know you will be breezing through your PhD and you will be breezing through your writing I, I promise you that like that's that's probably the single most important thing that you can do is just to sleep for eight hours every single day and get good quality sleep combined with exercise and combined with you know really healthy food is, is going to completely change your productivity and and your phd life to be honest so these are my five top tips to really finish your phd fast now with that said if you want to work with me personally to help you to finish your phd write an excellent thesis publish research papers in top journals then schedule a free one-to-one -one consultation with my team we're going to look at the biggest challenges that you have right now the goals that you want to achieve and then see how we can work together to help you to achieve your goals faster and with less effort and the link to that free consultation is right below the video